Hello friends. This is Bones Fiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Goku joined the Avengers as the God of Destruction? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. New York City Oscorp Headquarters, Octavius. How much more time you need? shouted Norman Osborn. After several failed attempts to acquire Spider-Man powers, the ambitious head of Oscorp Company decided that if he can't steal the powers from this universe's Spider-Man, then he would find a new, hopefully much easier target, the Spider-Man of a parallel universe. Sir, please, I just need a few more days and this machine will be ready to open a vortex to the other world, pleaded Dr. Octopus, trying his best to stay on the good side of Norman. No matter how hard he tried to stand on the expectations of that man, he still was treated like a dirt bag, like a prisoner. Life has always been hard on him, and Dr. Octopus hoped that it wouldn't get worse. I had already gave you whatever you need, Doc. It's been three months since you were working on this. No more excuses, said Norman as he snatched the remote panel from Dr. Octavius, ignoring the doctor's protests. But, sir, it's still incomplete if, don't you? but, me. As soon as he pushed the button of remote, a vortex gate opened in front of him. I had enough of Spider-Man, Stark and Shield, once I steal Spider-Man powers, this whole world will be mine. I will be ruler of this world, said Norman laughing menacingly. He rubbed his hands greedily as he observed the vortex with malicious intent swimming in his head. Both the smile and laugh faded from Norman's face as the vortex disappeared as soon as it was created. Sir, you can't go through it. This vortex is unstable. It need more power. We don't have the required energy. Octavius informed. Then supply the power in it. Use the arc reactor that you stole from Stark Industry, you imbecile. Norman gritted his teeth in anger. The success was just mere step away from him, yet due to continuous empty warning of his idiot prisoners he couldn't achieve it. He was just so close. Nothing was going to stand in his way even if it was as dangerous as this. Octavius did what he was ordered to do. In a few short minutes, the machine was fitted with the arc reactor. He knew this isn't going to end well but still there was nothing he could do to change the mind of his master. He was just a mere puppet of Norman. Oh! How much he hated this man! In fact, now that he thought of it, Octavius wouldn't really mind if his invention blew up with Norman in it. Supplying energy in 5.4, 3.2, Point one, system functioning properly. Conditions normal. Said Dr. Octopus as the machine buzzed to life, working properly. The vortex is now stable, it is now safe to enter. With a determined nod, Norman started walking towards the vortex. Just as he was about to step through the gateway, the whole room started shaking violently, sparks erupting from the vortex. On instinct, Norman backed away from the vortex, before turning to Octavius, pointing at him accusingly. No, 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 what the hell is happening now? shouted Norman in anger and frustration. System overload, Ark is supplying too much energy. The portal is unstable, and is falling apart, replied Dr. Octopus, who was currently trying his best to stabilize the vortex but his efforts were futile. Sir, we need to get out of here. This whole area is going to explode in few seconds. DBZ Universe Sun Residence, Gohan, I am hungry. Where is the food? asked the young Saiyan Goten holding his stomach which was growling every five seconds. Just a few minutes and the food will be ready, replied his elder brother Gohan, watching in amusement from the stove as his brother groaned. A few minutes later, Gohan and Goten were sitting around the table eating no, inhaling the food pretty much like they have never seen it before. It's really tasty, isn't it? I wonder if I should open a restaurant. Hum, what do you say? asked Gohan happily. He was surprised, however, when he saw tears running down Godin's cheeks. What's the matter, Godin? Is the food not tasty? asked Gohan to which Godin answered, no. So then what is it? It's just, the food, it reminded me of mother, replied Godin as he started sobbing. Oh, Godin, it's been four years since she died of cancer. I miss her a lot like you do. I bet father does too. But he is still busy training hard. I guess he is still more interested in fighting and eating rather than in women. 
Or maybe that is the only way he can still keep himself from breaking. Gohan thought as he moved towards Godin to comfort him. In hyperbolic time chamber, ah chu. That's not good. I think I caught a cold. Goku mused to himself. Not giving it another thought, Goku continued his training. As Goku flew, he started punching and kicking an invisible enemy at insane speeds. This training went for another four hours. Phew. That's good. I guess these weight clothes are working better than I imagined, said Goku panting lightly. But this training is nothing compared to what I want to achieve. Even after all these years of training I would still be unable to beat Lord Bills while in Super Saiyan 3. But I will definitely get stronger than him one day. Goku thought as he clenched his fist in determination. After taking a short break, Goku returned to his training. Taking a comfortable fighting stance, Goku cupped his hands and moved them near his waist and concentrating his energy, he prepared for his signature move. K.A. Me. H.A. Me. H.A.A.A.A.A. Yelled Goku as he sends his Kamehameha wave forward. As the attack ripped through the air at an intense speed, it curved and started moving towards its creator. This time I will stop it. Goku thought with a grin on his face. As Goku was about to prepare himself to block the attack, a large vortex opened behind him. Feeling himself getting pulled towards the vortex, Goku powered up and started flying away to escape it. Just as he was about to escape the gravitational pull of it, he was hit square in the chest by his own Kamehameha wave which sent him flying and he plunged into the vortex, falling. It disappeared as quickly as it appeared, leaving behind an empty chamber. Marvel Universe O S C O R P H E A D Q U A T E R S. Passing through a long, dark, and seemingly endless tunnel, Goku landed hard on his butt in a room full of weapons and advanced technology. Seems like something Capsule Corporation would have, he thought, but it just doesn't feel right. As he turned his gaze, he saw the back of two men running out of the room. One was wearing black suit and tie, while the other was donned in a suit with four giant robotic hands. Hey, wait were. Goku was about to call out for them but was cut off when the whole room exploded. Yelping in astonishment, he was sent flying outside the building as the blast was in such a close range he failed to deflect it, before crashing into a series of other large buildings. A large crater was formed where Goku landed, scaring the citizens of New York. Ouch! Whined Goku in a little pain as he walked out of crater without any scratch or injury. As he looked around he found himself in an unknown city with large skyscrapers. His attention turned towards a large television screen attached to the front of a huge building. On the screen, a news reporter was insulting a man in red and blue spandex costume. Man! What a bad day! Not only have I been crashing down again and again, but now I am stuck in place of which I know nothing about. Goku tried to concentrate on his friend's key. Damn! This usually doesn't happen. I can't sense Gohan and others' energy. After four to five failed attempts, Goku decided to walk around the city, tired of the day's events. The city, though unfamiliar, was more beautiful than any other he had ever seen in his life and during the night, the glowing buildings with their flashing neon lights were giving it an extraordinary look. Goku was surprised to see that there were no flying cars in this city, unlike West City which was full of them. Asking the random passers-by, Goku came to know the city was called New York City, but none of them ever heard about West City or Capsule Corporation, which he figured was the most famous company for inventing the capsules. In fact, no one has heard of capsules. Many people were looking at Goku and giving him odd looks due to his unique hairstyle and unnaturally muscular body. As he was walking, Goku saw a group of girls looking at him sheepishly and whispering among each other. They giggled when he stopped to stare at them for a moment. One of the girls approached him and giving him a piece of paper with seductive wink before skipping away happily to join her friends. As Goku opened the paper, he saw some numbers scrawled on it, along with the letters, XOXO. Not knowing what to do with it, he decided to keep it with him so that he could ask Gohan about it when he returned. Suddenly Goku heard a growling noise, from his own stomach. Man, I hadn't eaten anything for about a half day and now I am extremely hungry. He whined before looking around to find something to eat. A smile lit up on Saiyan's face as he saw a huge apple tree standing tall in the middle of the park he had wandered to. It was just a matter of seconds the apples on the tree was reduced from dozens to just a few as Goku was showing no mercy on the poor tree and the literal fruits of its labor. Sir, 
I have to ask to stop right now, came a voice from below the tree. Goku paused from eating and peered down from his branch, noticing a man in a blue uniform. Too hungry to care what the man had to say, Goku continued eating again, making the man growl in annoyance. Sir, this is public property. You can't just eat all the apples. If you continue this, you will get yourself in trouble, the cop warned. Officer 0108B, we have a major problem here at 29th Avenue. Some thugs are robbing the city bank and have kept civilians hostages. The thugs are armed with heavy weaponry, and we suspect there is a bomb with them. We need backup right now. Do you copy? Came an announcement at cop's radio transmitter. Copy that. I will be few minutes. It seems today is your lucky day, pal. I will let huh? Where did he go? The cop wondered aloud as Goku was nowhere at the site. Although it would take a few seconds by flight for Goku to reach the bank, he had to follow the cops to the scene being in an unfamiliar place. As Goku reached the bank, he saw the whole building was surrounded by large numbers of cops and cars. Sir, you are not allowed to go in there. This place is dangerous, warned one of the military as Goku approached the bank. Giving no heed to the warning, Goku brushed the uniformed guards away and headed towards the building, only for the cops to try tackle and stop him. But their force's entire attempt proved to be futile as Goku, before anyone could blink was standing at the entrance of bank. As Goku entered the bank, he saw two masked men who were throwing large wads of money in a huge bag, while the other three had their weapons pointed at the group of civilians and bankers who were cowering in a corner. Hey there, I am son Goku. I heard you people had kept innocent people hostages here, so I am here to request you leave them before anyone get hurts. Can you do that? asked Goku innocently. What the? How the did he enter here? Weren't you supposed to shoot anyone who tries to enter? shouted one of the thugs to his partner. He turned and pointed his gun, enraged, at Goku. Hey you, I don't know who you were but made a huge mistake coming here. threatened the thug. Oh but I thought I already told you my name. I am Sun Goku and I am stop you, Goku replied, with his famous sun grin. Shut the up bastard, yelled the thug as he fired the machine gun at the oblivious Saiyan. The robber's eyes widened in shock as the bullets simply bounced off Goku's body harmlessly. Hee hee, that tickles. Look guys, I would have liked to play with you but you are putting innocent people in danger. Let them go and I promise no harm will come to you. Goku told them calmly, with hint of sincerity in his voice. Like hell we are going to surrender, said another accomplice as he prepared a rocket launcher to blow the Saiyan into pieces. But before he could pull the trigger, his whole body was wrapped by a sticky stringy web, immobilizing Hun. No no, didn't your mommy teach you anything? Kids should not play with dangerous weapons, came a new voice from the shadows. As Goku turned his gaze towards the source of the voice, he saw a masked man hanging from the ceiling wearing a red and blue spandex costume with a spider tattoo in the middle of the chest. The man resembled the one who was getting insulted by the reporter he saw on TV before. The second thug was knocked out as he kicked by a boy who entered flying into the bank. He was wearing a weird helmet and armor and his body was surrounded by blue aura which Goku felt similar to that of Ki. Admit it, Spidey. I am thousand times better than you, the boy with helmet bragged. Shut up. Glowing bulb. The masked man shouted. In an unexpected maneuver, the duo started arguing with each other. Gosh! Spider-Man! Nova! Will you two idiots ever stop arguing with each other and work as a team? A girl, who was wearing a white costume which resembles that of a cat or tiger, clicked her tongue in annoyance as she punched the third thug who fell out of consciousness. Where did they come from? Goku assumed that one wearing red costume was called Spider-Man since there was a picture of a spider on his outfit while the other had to be Nova. Hearing the sound of gunshots, Goku saw yet another boy dodging the gunfire from the thugs. He was wearing a yellow mask which covered his eyes and hairs and green shirt with dragon tattoo on it. White Tiger is right. Pride is the greatest fall for a man. You two should work as a team. The newcomer quipped as he charged towards the thug concentrating his kai in his right hand and punched the man sending him fly a few meters away. You mother! You are going to pay for it! The last remaining thug yelled in a desperate attempt as he launched the rocket at the superheroes. Look out guys! shouted a black African American guy, with exceptional muscles and wearing sunglasses, as he pushed them away and took the explosion head on. The explosion sent him only a few feet away. 
other than that there was no sign of pain and injury on him, other than slightly singed clothes, much to Goku's surprise. You, you, it's your entire fault. We should have escaped by now but because of you our entire plan has failed. The thug accused as he pointed the rocket launcher at Goku. What, me? asked Goku, confused. Die, bastard, shouted the thug as he launched the rocket. Look out, warned Spider-Man in shock as this new guy was about to get blown in pieces. Just as the rocket was about to collide into Goku, just a few inches away from him, he simply swatted with his right hand sending it exploding outside the building. W what? H he is a monster. The thug recoiled and shouted in fear as he retreated outside the building. But before he ran much further, Goku phased in front of him giving a light chop to his neck, making him fall unconscious at the spot. Sorry but that had to be done. Goku apologized as he picked up the last thug, putting him with his other unconscious partners. Goku was confused as he saw the looks of surprise and shock on Spider-Man and his team members' faces. None of them knew what to say. Wow! Amazing! How did you do that? Can you teach me to do that? Asked Nova in excitement, being the first to break the silence. Chibi Nova swatting off Chibi Spider-Man web before grabbing and beating him like a mob. Well, I just swatted off, like this, Goku moved his hands in a swinging motion, and hit the pressure point of the guy at his neck. Goku replied not sure if he answered correctly. Who are you? Are you a new hero working for S.H.I.E.L.D.? asked Spider-Man. S.H.I.E.L.D.? Never heard of it. What is it? I am Son Goku. Goku replied with a smile, and you are. You don't know who we are? Spider-Man regarded Goku in surprise. He and his team members were one of the most famous superheroes of New York City and this new guy, Son Goku, with wild and spiky hair that defies gravity, doesn't know about them? I am Spider-Man, this is Nova, White Tiger, Iron Fist and Power Man. We are the protectors of this city. Told Spider-Man as he introduced Goku to his teammates respectively. Where are you from? I have never seen you here before, especially with such power, Shield should have already you by now asked white tiger everyone started staring at goku in curiosity the saiyans blushed and fidgeted nervously well haha ha, you see i am not from this city i was training at hyperbolic time chamber when a big hole appeared and sucked me in when i hit the ground the hole exploded and now i am stuck here in this city goku chuckled lightly while rubbing the back of his head hum that must be a dimensional vortex spider-man thought aloud director fury are you there? Spider Man tapped on his watch when it appeared on his wrist, and a bald black man wearing an eye patch appeared on the watch. Yes, I have heard everything. Bring that man to here. I have to talk to him, Nick Fury ordered. Got it. Spider Man, as he turned his attention towards Goku. Hey, Goku, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. wants to meet you. Maybe he can find a way to send you back home. Really? That sounds great. So, this Fury guy, is he a nice person? asked Goku happily, almost bouncing. Well, if you obey him he can a very nice person but if you go against him, he can be a really scary, told Spider-Man, sweating nervously. Chibi Spider-Man running desperately for his life as Chibi Fury was firing at him while laughing menacingly. Ha ha, he sounds like Piccolo. Is Piccolo a friend from your world? asked Spider-Man before receiving nod from Goku. So that means he is the Nick Fury of your world? That's scary. Chibi Fury now with Chibi P. Ecolo having wicked smiles on their faces stared firing at Chibi Spider-Man. Where is Fury now? Goku asked. The helicarrier must be at the outskirts of the city, he must be there, so we'll bring you over. We want to find what Fury wants from you as well. Spider-Man offered before receiving a nod from the Saiyan. You losers wait while I will meet Fury. Nova boosted before flying fast towards the outskirts of the city. He is quite overconfident, Goku noted. You have no idea, replied Power Man, shaking his head. Let's see how fast he is, Goku said as he levitated above them. Suddenly Goku's body was surrounded by white aura as he flew towards the outskirts of the city at insane speeds, creating strong winds as he passes. He is amazing. So incredibly fast, White Tiger said in Oz Goku was now out of their sight. What is he, relative of Thor and Nova? thought Spider-Man aloud as he was still in shock. Chibi Goku wearing Nova's helmet and carrying Thor's hammer set into the air before crashing into a building. Meanwhile, 
Nova was smiling widely as he was just few hundred meters away from the end of New York. He wouldn't mind a little showing off before that guy. Suddenly, a blur figure passed flying near him at an incredible speed, which could be easily compared to that of Iron Man, and landed at the outskirts of the city. As Nova reached the destined paste, he was shocked to see Goku standing there looking at him with a large grin on his face. Looks like I have won. But, how, when, dot how did you do that? Stuttered Nova as he can't believe he lost even though he started before everyone else. Look like you have managed to shut up Nova, came Spider Man voice as he and other finally reached there. So where is Nick Fury? asked Goku as he looked around but find no one. Strange, he can sense many energies in the empty sky. Above you. Goku watched in awe as a huge helicarrier appeared out of nowhere. As Goku flew above and landed on the ship, he was surrounded by soldiers pointing their laser cannons at him. The soldiers moved out of the way as the same bald black man on Spider-Man watch walked out, observing Goku in interest. You must be Son Goku. I am Nick Fury. Welcome to the shield. Goku studied the man with the eye patch in front of him with great interest. This man seemed to be more than what his looks were suggesting. But since it was not Goku's place and world, he decided to let it pass. Yes, you are right. I am Son Goku. Nice to meet you, Nick Fury," said Goku before shaking his hand with Fury. So, Son Goku, I heard your conversation with Spider-Man back there, so are you really from another dimension? Asked Fury as he walked into the helicarrier with Goku in tow, and Spider-Man team trailing behind. Yeah, I guess so. Actually it was Spider-Man who suggested that, stated Goku unsure, pointing towards Spider-Man. Haha. I'm not that great, it was quite easy to find that out, actually. Spider-Man boasted in a slightly arrogant tone as he saw an impressed look on Fury's face. Yeah whatever, commented Nova, who was bored and irritated by Spider-Man's smug behavior. Goku, I would like to talk to you about you and your world. Meet me in the meeting room in an hour. You can check out the rest of Helicarrier until then. Spider-Man will accompany you. Fury instructed as he walked away from the group heading to the other side of the helicarrier. So where to head first? asked Goku enthusiastically. Follow me, muscle man, said Spider-Man, as he lead the group. Forty-five minutes later. The tour of the carrier was not as fun or as entertaining as Goku had expected. Most of the rooms consisted of advanced technology and high-tech weapons he knew Bulma would go crazy over. Goku was a self-made man, he never really used much of technology and as much as he knew they were sometimes useful, but most of the time Goku felt that too much equipment was confusing. He still clearly remembered the first time he and Piccolo tried to get their driving license. A shiver ran down his spine as he recalled those events. I hope if everything is okay back there in my world, Goku thought aloud. Did you say something? asked Nova. Yeah, actually I was wondering if guys have food here, I really am hungry right now. Goku said, clutching his stomach as it started growling. He laughed and scratched the back of his head in the usual sun way, much to the amusement of the team. Yeah, sure. Shield has all kinds of facilities, you will get plenty of food here, said Nova as they headed towards the kitchen. Just as the group entered the kitchen, Goku started drooling, gazing hungrily at all the food on the table, as if he had never eaten before. Here you go. Eat all you want to. Spider-Man said the exact same words Goku wanted to hear. With that, Goku launched himself at the table in an instant. Everyone's sweat dropped as they watched Goku shove the food up his mouth at such a speed he looked like he was practically inhaling it. Nova wasn't sure if Goku actually managed to taste the food before swallowing it, but regardless the newcomer didn't seem to mind. Chicken, noodles, pizza, none of them could withstand the wrath and fury of Goku's hunger. Whoa! And I thought I ate a lot. Would you look at that? Now that's just insane. Power Man stuttered in shock, to particularly no one. Do you eat this much all the time? asked Nova, who was just as to put it nicely, surprised as the rest of the team was. No, I usually eat more, but I already had apples, Goku stated casually as he shoved a leg of ham into his mouth, not wanting to stop even to answer a question. Oh, I think I gonna be sick. White Tiger grimaced, obviously disgusted at Goku's eating habits. She covered her mouth and willed herself not to throw up her lunch, but failed as she ran out the room looking a tad greener than usual. A few minutes later, 
The food on the table was erased form existence. The only survivors that had not been consumed were the empty plates and bowls, along with a few bones that were licked clean of the meat. Oh boy! Was the food good or what, I'm full! Goku chirped happily as he patted his stomach. I think it's time for the meeting, don't you think? stated Goku as he sauntered out of the kitchen, contented with his meal, leaving behind the jaw-dropped Spider-Man, Nova, Iron Man and Power Man. Meeting Room Everyone had took their seats, all the eyes on Goku and his bottomless pit of a stomach, who was still wondering about the sudden attention. All were anxious to know more about this new visitor from the other dimension. As usual Spider-Man was uncomfortable with this unusual silence and decided to break it. Congratulations, Mr. Goku, you have won a special one of a kind interrogation with the one and only, Director Fury. How are you feeling about it? joked Spider-Man, trying lighten up the tension in the room. He was, however, silenced as Fury shot him a threatening glare before turning his attention towards the Saiyan. Goku, I want you to tell me all about yourself and I don't want to hear any lies. Don't get me wrong, but I just want to make sure that you are no threat to New York and to the rest of the world. Said Fury in a serious tone. Goku nodded instantly, clearly understanding Fury's reasoning. You can't just trust anyone, he had learned from his previous battles. Say Frieza, for example. After Goku let him go, the lizard still came back searching for revenge. Unfortunately, Goku was not one to take his own advice, he liked to see the good in even the darkest of souls and give everyone a second chance, whether they deserved it or not. Ahem. This is going to sound absurd but in my world, I am, well, not from my own world. So that you are, yes, I am from another world, back in my dimension, I am an alien. I was originally from alien warrior race called Saiyans. They were one of the most ruthless and destruction loving races in the entire galaxy. Their main goal was to explore new planets and purge off their inhabitants, so they can sell the planets to others later. Exclaimed Goku with a hint of rage and disgust in his voice. Everyone in the room tensed up hearing the, the truth about Goku's origin, none of them expected that such a cheerful person to be from such a ruthless and merciless background. Silence fell upon the room once more as Goku continued his tale. But planet Vegeta that's the planet the Saiyans lived on along with almost every Saiyan was destroyed by an evil galactic overlord known as Frieza for the fear that Saiyan's powers were increasing dramatically and would one day defeat him. You see, the Saiyans were actually under Frieza's rule because none of them were strong enough to take him down. Anyways on the same day, I was sent on the earth as an infant to conquer it. But fortunately after I landed on earth, I was adopted by a kind old man named Gohan. I was quite aggressive and feisty at first, but due to an accident that I hit my head, I lost all my memories and forgot about my mission of conquering the earth. Later I made some good friends and battled powerful enemies before eventually becoming one of the Earth's group of fighters called the Z Fighters. My mission is to protect the Earth from the evil monsters and fight strong opponents. Goku explained, honestly. I see. Now I get a clear picture of you, said Fury. He thought for a while, before continuing, we will try our best to find a way to send you back home. A smile lit up on Goku's face before he nodded. Since you claim yourself as Earth's protector. I would ask you to demonstrate your skills. Maybe you can assist us maintaining peace on Earth. Fury nodded. Yeah, sure. I would gladly help you as much as I can. So, do you have a training room or something? asked Goku, hoping to find a new challenge. Yes, we do, and I am sure you will like it, replied Fury, a smirk on his face. Training room. Goku was now standing in a large empty room, supposedly the training room of the Shield. A few push ups and stretching were his basic warm up routine and were always required. Goku, I will be testing your fighting skills, power and speed first. So for that I will send in some robots to fight with you. You have to destroy them as quickly as you can. Informed Fury, his voice echoing through the room. What? That's it? Goku pouted in disappointment, he had expected more. After all, he had battled Bulma's droids under 300x gravity with Vegeta before. If you clear them, IWLL make it more challenging later. Really? All right. Then bring it on. Goku regained his cheerful look and grinned. Just as those words left Goku's mouth, a part of the ceiling opened up and about 20 human sized robots fell straight out of it. The very moment the robots hit the ground, they rushed towards Goku and started to attack him ferociously, only for Saiyan to dodge the punches and kicks. 
The ones that had not attacked him at the back shot laser beams at Goku, which were effortlessly evaded. To say Goku was bored, wasn't wrong. Bulma's droids were much faster and their attacks were stronger, but even they proved no match for a Saiyan. In fact, he had been going against them as a child, especially fighting the androids from the Red Ribbon Army. To say that it was child's play was largely ironic. Deciding not to waste any more time, Goku launched multiple key blasts at the robots, destroying them all in one go. Huh? That was easy. Mused Goku as he stood in the center of the room, the dismantled and scorched parts of the robots scattered around him. Whoa. Wait a second. Those blasts, they seem. Spider Man thought aloud, glancing towards Iron Fist. Yes. They seem to be of same energy as mine. Kai or Ki but he seems to be able to control them far better than I can. We're in totally different leagues of power, Iron Fist exclaimed, completely taken. Wow. I don't know about you guys but that was really cool, I want to know what more this guy can do, said Nova impressed. Though it cannot be seen on Fury but he himself is impressed by Goku's skills. Years of experience as a super spy instinctly told him that Goku was good no a master at different styles of fighting but still something about this guy doesn't seem fitting. He seems to, hiding something. But what? Okay. Goku, I admit you are skilled enough to handle those robots without any effort. I would now like to see how much better you can do against them. Said Fury as he sent in the new challenge for the Saiyan. Goku watched in great interest as the door of the training room opened revealed his new friends, Spider-Man and his team. Goku's lips formed a smirk. He had felt like bringing up the idea of sparring with them at some point and he didn't even need to ask. This is your challenge. Nick Fury instructed. You have to defeat Spider-Man, Nova, Iron Fist, White Tiger and Power Man all at once. This is one of best training teams in S.H.I.E.L.D. you can back out right now if you want to, I understand. What? No way, I'm not backing out, the real fun is starting right now. Goku grinned, his eyes glinting dangerously as a Saiyan as took his fighting stance. With that, Goku and his opponents advanced towards each other. Spider-Man, being the team leader was the first to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Goku and exchange punches with Goku. Or more like, Goku was giving him punches and he was trying his best not to receive them. Even with his spider senses, the web swinger was having trouble dodging Goku's attacks. Deciding to go on offense, Spider Man swung his fist at Goku's face. Goku ducked, easily dodging his attack and threw a punch at Spider Man, who narrowly saved himself when he dodged it by doing backflips. Without looking behind, Goku sidestepped, dodging a sneak attack from White. He gazed towards his right and saw Iron Fist running towards him. Soon both started exchanging punches and kicks at an inhuman speed. Having an upper hand in both combat speed and reaction time, Goku managed to deliver a swift kick to right shoulder of Kungler Warrior sending him few meters away. Nova hovered in air while watching his teammates fighting with the Scion while looking for an opening to attack. Just as Goku kicked away Iron Fist, his left side was left unguarded or that's what Nova thought, that is. Deciding to take that chance, Nova released an energy blast at Goku who saw the attack coming and performed multiple backflips avoiding the blast before sending his own key ball at Nova. Nova saw the key blast approaching him at a very high speed, but managed to avoid it at the last second. To his surprise, Goku suddenly appeared in front of him before hitting Nova with a devastating punch that knocked the air out of him. The force was enough to send him through the walls of the training room and crashing into the rooms several meters away, before the defeated warrior blacked out. As Goku touched down gracefully, he found himself wrapped in the sticky webs by Spider-Man. Seeing his opponent immobilized for the moment, Spider-Man advanced at Goku hoping to at least land a single hit in the fight. The strength and flexibility of the webs were very impressive, Goku had to admit. It was more durable than it seemed. Applying a considerable amount of strength, Goku snapped the web strings and broke free before dodging a series of punches and kicks from the web swinger. Seeing an opening, Goku delivered a right uppercut to Spider-Man followed by a kick on the neck and a punch which were enough to make Spider-Man crash into the wall, unconscious. White Tiger lashed at the Saiyan hoping that her attack would work this time. But to her surprise, Goku disappeared from her sight before reappearing behind her. A stinging pain was felt on her neck before she slipped into the darkness. Power Man, deciding that he had seen enough, made his first move by charging towards him, as Goku did the same. 
Ha! yelled Power Man. HYAA! Goku yelled as they were in a straight fist bump struggle, trying to push each other away. Neither of them gained upper hand before Goku decided to end it. Power Man wondered in his mind about the smirk that had formed on Goku's face. The answer to his question came quickly as Goku drove his knee into Power Man's chin followed by uppercut, leaving him dazed. By now, Power Man's mind was swirling and his head was throbbing. He regained control of his senses just in time to see a Saiyans charging at him. Oh shit! was all Power Man muttered, as he knew what was coming. The next instant, Goku's fist made contact with Power Man's face, which surely by far wasn't one of the best moments of Luke's life. The force of the punch was strong enough to create a shockwave, shaking the entire room and sending Power Man straight into the wall, making a man sized dent on it. Seeing that Power Man wasn't going to be able to get up anytime soon, Goku turned his attention towards Iron Fist who was the only member of his team standing. From the past few seconds, Goku realized that Iron Fist was the calmest and best fighting member of his team. So what you say? Should we end this? asked Goku smirking. I was thinking about the same. We both know how this is going to end but still no harm in trying. Replied Iron Fist with a rough smile on his face. Iron Fist started concentrating his golden aura in his right hand. Goku decided to fight fair and square as he himself started gathering his ki at this right hand too. Ha! With a yell, both warriors ran towards each other. Stop it right now, shouted Fury, but it fell onto deaf ears. Both warriors were engulfed by the huge golden aura as they collided. The aura explanded in the whole room, destroying everything in sight. The whole helicarrier shook violently. All the windows were shattered by the shockwave. Is everyone all right? Fury yelled, entering the training room which was completely destroyed. Yes. I guess we are. Spider-Man coughed slightly along with Nova, White Tiger and Power Man who were barely standing. But what about Iron Fist and Goku? We're here. Iron Fist weak shaky voice came from the center of the room. That is, what used to be the center. As the smoke cleared, could see Goku levitating in the middle, supporting a beaten up Iron Fist slowly coming towards them. The middle of the room was completely gone. They had a wonderful view of New York a thousand feel below. But what surprised everyone was that Goku didn't have a single scratch on his body, and was not at all exhausted. That was fun. We should try this again, said Goku with a smile on his face as he laid Iron Fist on the ground. Don't ever try to pull off those kinds of stunts in my ship again, warned Fury in a threatening voice. So did I pass? asked Goku happily making everyone sweat drop at his naive behavior. Fury sighed, rubbing his temple as if he was speaking to a five-year-old, which, in that case, was true in the mental sense. Yes, you passed. You are now officially a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Agent? What does that mean? asked Goku innocently. Everyone face palmed at Goku's stupid question. You can say that from now on you are a member of S.H.I.E.L.D. You will be provided a specific task which you have to perform in order to protect the world. Replied Nick Fury explained slowly, simplifying it into the best way he could think of. Now, I see. So what task do I have to do? Asked Goku seemingly understanding about his job. About that. I still have to decide. You will be informed tomorrow. Replied Fury. And what about us? Asked Spider-Man. I suppose you have school tomorrow. Am I not right? reminded Fury. Oh no. We completely forgot about our test. Damn, Speederman said, fear and panic evident in his voice before he and his team ran outside the training room in a frenzy. And what about me? asked Goku, unsure. Since you do not have any home here, Shield will provide you with everything even a house for the time being. Assured Nick Fury as he and Goku walked out of the room. The next day, Goku was sleeping soundly in his bedroom. Fury wasn't kidding when he mentioned that they provided all facilities, food, clothes, and training room, which he destroyed yesterday, were all given to him, it was almost as good at Capsule Corp. Agent Son Goku. Wake up. Nick Fury has called you, informed a worker from outside. After freshening up, Goku threw on a pair of black pants and a yellow t-shirt as his GI needed a wash. He had also requested for more outfits like his orange and blue GI, but they were far from done. A few minutes walk from his room led him straight to the main control room of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
Nick was talking to short red-haired woman wearing a yellow fork dress. But strangely, the woman had wings on her back, much unlike anyone he had seen before. Nice timing, Agent Goku. I was discussing about your mission with a member of Earth's strongest team, Avengers. Told Nick Fury, she will be your partner for your first mission. Agent Goku. Huh? Exclaimed his new partner with interest as she moved towards with Goku with warm smile on her face. You have no idea how many people here are talking about you defeating Spider-Man and his team effortlessly. Hey, I think I overdid back there, said Goku while rubbing back of his head in the usual sun way, blushing slightly. And please call me Goku. Agent Goku sounds awkward. The woman in front of him giggled before nodding. Sure, Goku, it will be fun working with you. Oh, I am so sorry for my rude behavior. What's your name? asked Goku. I am Janet Van Dyne, but you can simply call me Wasp. Goku was happy. Quite happy, in fact, since he is going for his first mission ever since he came here. According to that Fury guy, the people they have to watch in this mission were dangerous. And dangerous opponents meant powerful opponents. Being a Saiyan, Goku craved that challenge. He and Janet were recruited for this mission. Subconsciously, he was smiling at his new partner. Janet was currently driving the car since Goku had not acquired a driver's license in either reality towards their mission destination but was getting distracted because Goku continuously looked over and smiled at her. Goku, can I ask why you keep smiling? Asked Janet, returning the smile for what seemed to be the hundred time. Her cheeks were getting tired, but, strangely she didn't mind it was hard to find someone that cheerful now. I am excited to fight that man which Fury warned us about. He seems to be quite strong. Goku chirped happily, with a hint of anxiety in his eyes. Hmm. Dot are you sure you want to fight him? I don't think you would be able to defeat him. I mean, he was able to handle the entire Avengers team on his own, told Janet. Really? Goku's eyes widened, getting more excited than before. It was the first time that Goku was going to fight a really strong opponent in this world. Although it was fun training with Spider-Man and his team, but they were too far out of his league. He needed to constantly make concessions and curb his power so he didn't kill any of them by accident. Janet, although a member of the Avengers, was too weak to fight him. The rest of the team were still a mystery as he had not met any of them yet, but Goku hoped there would be at least one person able to give him a challenge. So where are we heading again? Asked Goku. You forgot about it already? Janet asked in surprise. Goku nodded. Ah. Well, you see Fury told us. Flashback. Goku, this is your partner for this mission. Fury pointed towards Janet. Janet aka Wasp. She is a member of the Avengers. Avengers? What's that? Is it food? Goku blinked, confused. Fury grunted at Goku's stupidity while Janet giggled at his naiveness. No, Avengers is not food. It's a team of world's greatest superheroes. Our job is to protect to the earth from any possible threat, Janet said. Ah. That's just like me and my friends in my home world. Goku nodded, finally understanding. To be honest, I expected to see a brood of some sort when I heard you defeated Spider-Man and his team, but I am quite surprised to find a fine handsome man in front of me, complimented Janet. Really? Thanks. Goku blushed slightly, scratching the back of his head. Fury cleared his throat, getting their attention. Janet, if you're done flirting, will you and Goku care to hear about the mission? Asked Fury, anger in his tone. W what? I am not flirting with him, Janet stammered, flustered and trying to defend herself. What is flirting? Goku asked, making Evie one sweat drop. Trying not to take such a small matter any further, Fury turned towards the huge screen in front of him. He scanned through a huge amount of data files and finally found the folder he was looking for. This is the footage that our surveillance camera caught yesterday, told Fury as he started the video. In the video, what seemed to a normal S.H.I.E.L.D. employee was walking towards an unknown machine before opening it up and started dismantling it. A few minutes later just as he removed a disc from the center. Another employee ran in the room and tried to stop high, but was shot dead on the spot. Suddenly the employee holding the disc morphed into a blue woman with red hair. Turning her gaze towards the camera, the woman smirked before shooting it, ending the transmission. Mystique, was the first word that escaped Janet's mouth. What? Who? Goku asked, clearly not knowing the woman. 
That woman. Her name is Mystique. She is a member of infamous group known as Brotherhood. She has many records under her name for stealing shield information, told Fury. So what did she get this time? Asked Janet in a serious tone. She stole the main component of the atomic manipulating machine. We didn't know why she needs it but that machine is one of the most dangerous weapons in the world and it's likely that Brotherhood will use it against mankind, said Fury. She doesn't seem very strong to me. Why not send other agents to get that thingy from her? Goku wondered aloud. While it's true that Mystique is not someone that poses a great threat but the same cannot be said for her boss, told Fury. A picture of a middle-aged man flashed on the screen, he was wearing a red helmet and a red cape. This man is Magneto. An alpha-level mutant, leader of Brotherhood. He has a genetic mutation which allows him to control metal freely. But the most dangerous thing about him is his hate for humans. He has several records of attempting to eliminate mankind, informed Fury. Hearing about this Magneto guy, Goku knew he had to fight him. His Saiyan instincts were screaming from inside, demanding a battle. And that's exactly Goku was looking forward to. So we will have to fight him, right? Asked Goku with wide puppy-like eyes. He isn't taking it seriously, thought Fury with a sweat drop. Yes, that's why you will need help. You have to go to Xavier Institute for Mutants. Charles Xavier will help you there, said Fury you may depart. Goku raised his hand as he wanted to ask something important. Yes? When will I get the food? I am hungry, said Goku making fury, well, furious enough that a vein could be seen on the side of his forehead. His eyebrow twitched dangerously which reminded Goku slightly of Vegeta and Janet took it as her cue. Immediately, she grabbed Goku's arm before dragging him outside the room. But what about the food? You will get it once we reach there. End of flashback. So we are heading to Xavier Institute, right? Asked Goku as he was watching the trees outside. Yes. It's just a few kilometers from now, replied Janet before looking at Goku. Is something wrong? Goku asked as he saw Janet staring at him. And no, nothing. Janet blushed before turning her attention back to the road. Damn. What's wrong with you, Janet? This isn't you. He is kinda cute and handsome but he is naive too. Also, you are not sure if he is interested in you, is he? Wondered Janet. Lost in her own world, Janet didn't see what was in front of her until it was too late. Janet, watch out! Shouted Goku making her break out of her thoughts. Bam! Suddenly the car was hit by something. Though the brakes were applied almost instantly, the collision couldn't be avoided. Janet almost slammed her head against the wheel and Goku gripped onto the handle, wide-eyed although it would hardly leave a scratch on him. Immediately, they got out of the car to see what had hit them. Janet's eyes widened as she saw a nearly dead deer in front of her. Blood was flowing from it into a small puddle and its death throes could be heard. Tears started forming her eyes, she was blaming herself for this accident. It's all. My. Fault. I. I. Didn't. Mean to do. This. Janet murmured as tears rolled down her cheeks. It's all right. Accidents do happen. No one is to be blamed. Don't cry, Janet, it's all right. Said Goku in a soothing tone, comforting his new friend. With a calm and confident face, Goku approached the deer and placed his hand on it. Suddenly a golden aura engulfed Goku's hand and flowed to the wounded animal. After a few seconds, the aura disappeared and a smile formed on Goku's face. It's done said Goku as he stepped a few feet back. What is done? asked Janet in confusion. She watched in astonishment as the deer slowly opened its eyes, stood up and ran into the wild, unscathed. But, dot but how? asked Janet, who was dumbstruck by the scene. I transferred some of my life energy in it. Key can be used to heal others too, replied Goku with his famous sun grin. Goku's eyes widened in surprise as he felt two arms wrapped around his waist, he was surprised to find it was Janet. It was the first time in many years that any woman, other than Chi Chi had hugged him. Thank you, Goku. If it weren't for you, I would have blamed myself for killing that poor thing for my whole life. Janet sniffed as she let go of Goku after a few moments. Hey, don't mention it. We're friends, right? That's what they do. Help each other. Goku grinned. I am hungry. Let's go to that institute. Sure. Let's go. 
Janet said with a heartly smile as she wiped away her tears. Outside Xavier Institute a certain black woman with white hairs and white eyes was standing at the gates with an annoyed look on her face. Damn. They're late. Storm muttered particularly to no one. It had been half an hour since she had started waiting for them. Though she was not an attendant of some sort the professor had wanted her to be their guide. Yet they were nowhere to be seen. Storm's patience was running low. Just as she was about to head back the sound of car's engine filled her ears. Turning her gaze, she saw a blue Lamborghini coming to a stop a few meters in front of her. Hey. Sorry we're late. Janet bowed sheepishly as she walked out of the car. Yeah. Almost half an hour. Storm muttered, displeased. Sorry, you see when we were coming here. Spare me the details. Professor is waiting for you. Is that guy with you? Asked Storm pointing towards Goku who was shraring at the institute with an open mouth. Yes, he's with me. His name is Goku. He is a newcomer, replied Janet. The reason Goku was astonished by the institute was not because of the huge size of it, but because of the power levels he could sense inside the building. Some of them were little higher than normal, some quite high, but there was one which was the strongest of them all. The unusual thing was that didn't remain there, constantly appearing and disappearing. Goku, if you are done with sightseeing, I want to introduce you to one of the teachers of this institute, Storm. Janet pointed over to Storm. Nice to meet you, Storm. I am son Goku. Goku smiles as they shook hands. Nice to meet you too, Goku. Now if you too follow me? Storm led the pair into the institute. We are here. Storm announced it as she came to halt in front of a certain door in hallway. When she opened the door, Goku and Janet saw an elderly man sitting on a wheelchair in front of number of children who were attentively listening to every word of his lecture. The man smiled nodded at the guests before turning his attention back towards the children. Okay, children, that's all for today. Don't forget to revise what you have learned today. He instruced as the students left. Ah, Storm, it seems that you have finally brought our guests here. Charles smiled as he moved his wheelchair towards them. Would have been better if they weren't late. Storm scoffed as she left the room. I apologize for Storm's behavior. She has an old habit of speaking without thinking. The professor rolled his eyes. Anyways, I am the principal of this institute, Charles Xavier. You can simply call me professor. I am Janet and this is Goku. We are sent by Nick Fury for a mission here. Yes, I know. Fury has told me earlier about the mission and the arrival of you too. You don't have to worry. We will do our best to help in retrieving what Mystique had stolen. Ensured Professor with a warm smile. Professor. Fury told me that this institute is for mutants. But what mutants exactly are there? Asked Goku in curiosity. Mutants are the genetic mutated people that are born with X genes which allows them to have different abilities far beyond human imagination. Most of them don't know how to control and use their power until they reach puberty, told Professor. Amazing. So mutants are people with special powers. You are a mutant too, right? What are your powers? Asked Goku. I am a telepath. I can read mind of other people. I can also control them with my mind however I desire to, replied Charles. Amazing. Reading minds, huh? Can you tell me what I am thinking right now? Goku bounced excitedly. My apologies, son Goku. That's what I've been trying to do from the moment you entered here. I don't know why but it seems your mind is protected by some kind of invisible force. It's not allowing me pass through. Professor muttered honestly, more to himself than to them. It may be because of ki posses, wondered Goku, your ki? Yes, as you may know, Ki is the energy that everyone posses. It helps to strengthen the body as well as mind. So that means the greater the ki a person posses, the more is his mind protected. Goku explained, his mind briefly flashing towards the Majin Buu incident a few years ago. Resisting the telepathy of Charles was not something just anyone could do. He possessed the power to control the mind of every single person of this planet if he wanted to, but this man standing in front of him was resisting it without even trying. It was as if it was nothing. Professor, a voice from outside echoed in. Yes, come in. As the door opened, a tall woman with long red hair, a brunette along with two men, one of which was wearing weird goggles, entered the room. Ah, Jean. May I ask what bring you here? Asked Professor. You know damn well why we are here, 
The man standing next to one with goggles snapped. Yes, Logan, they are S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, as you may know. They are staying here for the sake of their mission. Told Professor earning a grunt from Wolverine suggesting he didn't like the Saiyan at the first sight. S.H.I.E.L.D., huh? I already don't like the sound of that. Logan sent an angry glare at Goku who simply grinned at him. Oh shut it, Logan. Will you ever know how to trust someone? Asked Jean, she receiving silence from him. I apologize for Logan's behavior. He is kinda paranoid. Anyways, I'm Jean. This is Kitty, Scott and Logan. Said Jean as she introduced them to everyone respectively. Nice to you all. I am Goku and this is Janet, said Goku smiling. Goku, we will start searching for Mystique's location tomorrow. You can stay here until then. Jean and Kitty will show you your rooms. If you need anything, you may ask them for help. With that said, Professor left the room followed by Scott and Logan, who still wasn't happy with his arrival. But Goku being Goku didn't notice that. Even if he did notice, he didn't care about it. So, Goku, tell us something about yourself. Said Kitty getting closed and closer to Goku but stopped in her tracks as she heard a low growling. Sure. But can we eat first? I'm hungry, said Goku nervously while scratching the back of his head. He, Sure. Let's get going. Giggled Kitty as she grabbed Goku's arm before dragging him with her. Janet watched with narrowed her eyes as Goku was being taken away by Kitty. Could it be? Jealously? No way. Okay. Maybe it was jealousy, but she was sure that Goku won't fall for any woman that easily. Also she is definitely more beautiful than that kitty anyways. It seems like kitty develop an interest in Goku. It's quite rare that she shows interest in anyone that easily. It would be quite a problem if you let your boyfriend go with any girl. Jean teased. W what? Boyfriend? H he is not my boyfriend. Janet mumbled, turning twenty shades of red. Really? Wow, that's good news, said Jean smirking. What do you mean? I mean that now maybe I too have my shot on him, but let's keep this little secret between us girls. Said Jean giving her a wink before walking away. It took few minutes for Janet's mind to register what Jean was talking about, so now she had to compete for Goku with them. Great. That was one of the least things she could worry during this mission. Next day. It was morning and Goku was still sleeping half naked in his bed. He and Janet were given separate rooms much to Janet's disappointment. The previous day went quite normally. After the meal in cafeteria, Goku told himself to Kitty and Jean, who arrived just after them. Both seemed to be quite astonished after knowing his background and seeing his appetite. By talking them, Goku came to know about the abilities of many mutants in the institute. Many of their abilities were quite beautiful and useful but still he couldn't understand why humans would hate them. Goku was awoken by a knocking on the door. Hold on, I'm coming, said Goku he jumped out of bed. Opening the door, Goku saw a brunette girl with white straps on her hair. She was about the same height as that of Kitty. Goku was about ask for the reason for waking him but the girl's eyes seemed to be fixed on his abs. Wow. Damn. I mean. Sorry. I am rogue, said the girl with a little blush on her face. I have heard about you from Jean. You are the one with ability to absorb other people's power, aren't you? asked Goku receiving a nod from Rogue. So brings you here? Don't get me wrong but I am kinda sleepy right now, Goku yawned. Ah, yes, Professor wants me to tell you that he had found what you were looking for, said Rogue. Really? That's great. Just wait here, said Goku as he immediately went into the room before coming back in new clothes in an instant. That was fast. Rogue's sweat dropped, at Principal's office. Goku immediately arrived at the office to see that Jean, Storm and Scott along with Janet and Logan were also there. You were late, bub, said Wolverine. Sorry, I was sleeping, said Goku before turning towards Professor. Is that true? Yes. I have her location of mystique by using Cyribro, told Professor. All right, we can go on that mission, Goku cheered as he ran outside the office. Quite an energetic fellow, isn't he? chuckled Professor. He was about to dismiss the others when Goku's head popped back in. Can you tell me where Mystique X Gatli is? asked Goku with a nervous smile. Everyone in the room sweat dropped. About 500 kilometers from here, on a deserted island in Pacific Ocean. There are Brotherhood's headquarters, informed Professor. 
So what are we waiting for? Let's go, said Goku excitedly, as he was finally was going to get a good fight. Anger, tension, stress, frustration, all can be seen on his face. It wasn't the first nor was the last time Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., got angry. In fact, he got used to these things. But anger, to such extent, at this point, he ought to think about resigning. And just why shouldn't he? Just as his plan to know the Saiyan's abilities was going to succeed, an idiot interfered and messed it all up. An idiot, the same one who was sitting and smiling goofily in front of him, hand behind the back of his head in that ridiculous pose, absolutely no guilt or regret for his actions. Some part of him was not sure if said idiot even knew what he did. Just look at him, leaning back against his very expensive and very comfortable chair, one which this fool most definitely did not deserve, staring at the female agents without even paying the slightest bit of attention to his very well prepared and well articulated speech. Who the hell did that idiot think he is? Fury gritted his teeth in anger before slamming his fist on the table, startling Goku and Janet who happened to sitting alongside that idiot. Goku turned his gaze towards the man, and saw a small satisfied smirk on his face. How dare you interfere in their mission? You weren't supposed to there, Fury yelled, a vein bulging out on his forehead, that reminded Goku slightly of Vegeta. A few hours ago Goku was sitting in a jet owned by X-Men. A yawn escaped his mouth before he could close it he was simply too bored, Saiyans didn't do well sitting still for very long. For most of Earth's heroes, this jet was the state of the art, extreme mode of traveling. But for him, it was as if riding a turtle. A very, very slow turtle. Goku had once sped from one side of planet Namek to another, in just under a few seconds, and that wasn't even when he was in Super Saiyan. Getting to the enemy's base would take no time at all that is, if he knew the right direction. Of course, he could ask for directions, but there was a reason Chi Chi never let him hold the map. Hey, you alright, big guy? Jane tilted her head, sitting next to him. Are we there yet? Goku whined, sighing with boredom. Here he was now, in another dimension, yet so far no worthy opponent at all. It would have been better to train with Whis and Vegeta. Hell, he would even take on Yamcha or Krillin rather than staying here. At least they could sow key blasts. We are here. Storm informed her crew, preparing the jet for landing. The jet slowly descended on the ground. The propellers, made almost noiseless, blew away the sand and small vegetation before the jet landed with a soft thud. The back door opened, and a blast of cool fresh air greeted the heroes, almost as if welcoming them. This is it, Goku. You ready for your first mission? Janet smirked turning her gaze towards the Saiyan only to see nothing but an empty seat. Don't tell me. Janet's sweat dropped as she saw a disappearing dot flying at an insane speed straight through the forest towards the only building on the island. Damn it. He's too reckless. Scott shook his head, rushing towards the tower. Normally he would call for stealth, but it was very likely very, very likely, that Goku had already blown their cover. After all, how can a flying man in blue and orange possibly escape anyone's attention? Charging in straight without giving a, I think I'm starting to like this guy, Wolverine chuckled a bit. Just as the group reached the building, they saw Goku standing outside, a very confused expression on his face. Before one goes on, he or she must know that, indeed, there are two main types of confusion that Goku could most possibly show. The first is genuine confusion, as can be expressed by even you common folk, which consists of a very very large majority of the world's confusion. The second, however, is a type of confusion that only our favorite Earth Saiyan could express also most commonly known as the regular Goku look. For this scenario, the genuine confusion type is used. What's the matter? We thought you had already entered the headquarters. Storm cautiously looked around. Nobody's there, replied Goku, ing his head to one side. That isn't possible. Professor X is never wrong, Jane muttered, as she concentrated with her telepathic powers. She got nothing absolutely no one in the building. Before anyone could even react, their hands and legs were bound by metal and they were slammed against the hard cold wall of the tower. Don't you children ever learn anything from your previous mistakes? A oh so familiar voice echoed from above, and everyone tilted their heads towards the sky, squinting against the sun. It belonged to an elderly man wearing a red helmet and a cape that flapped against the wind. Magneto, storm hissed, venom dripping from her voice. 
I can't believe they fell for such a simple trick, again. Ha <laughs> ha. Mocking laughter traveled from the forest. In blur of motion, three characters appeared a man with silver hair, a woman with purplish red short hair and a man of huge stature standing over seven feet with short blonde hair and a matching fur jacket. I mean, come on, guys. Who in their right minds will put their top secret headquarters right in the middle of nowhere, displayed for the world to see? You guys are like ing immature, laughed the man with silver hair, Quicksilver. Wolverine growled in anger, straining against the metal wires that rubbed against his limbs, but they didn't move a bit. Damn it, old man, what the air these? Ah, poor Wolverine, is that how Charles taught you to talk to your elders? Magneto hovered down slowly, smirking. Release me now and I'll show you how I talk to my elders, growled Logan. Ha! Huh. Hey Quicksilver, I though you needed a brain to learn manners, how come the both of them know how to? The blonde turned towards his partner, glancing a mocking glance over to the duo. Sabretooth. Always barking when not needed. You should at least put a leash on your puppy, Magneto, Janet quipped, which only added fuel to fire as Sabretooth readied his adamantium claws to rip her apart. That's enough. You people are in no position to speak. I suggest you keep your mouth shut until or unless I say so. Magneto snarled. He stood a few feet in front of them before turning his gaze towards the Saiyan. As for you, my friend, Mystic has shown what you're capable of, so I have an offer for you. Join me in the Brotherhood. We will make full use of your potential and tap into your legendary power. Our enemies will be at our feet. You will get anything you want, nobody will dare defy you. Join me. Offered Magneto, a patronizing smirk on his face, as the X Men watched with nervous anxiety. What to expect of this man called Goku? It had just been a few hours since they first met, sure, he has shown to have a naive and childish nature, but was it all an act? Could he be trusted at all? After all, they have learned over the years never to judge a book by its cover. You are evil, right? Goku asked. Magneto blinked. What? This was most certainly not the response he was expecting. Goku turned towards his newfound friends, staring at their quizzical faces. He's evil, right? There was a pause, as everyone glanced towards each other in shock, before Storm hesitantly nodded. Goku smiled comfortingly at her, which made her head spin, and turned back to Magneto. This offer seems promising, but nah, I'll pass. I don't hang out with evil guys, replied Goku. He flexed his muscles slightly and the binds broke free, startling everyone. Now hand over what you've stolen. He stepped forth and extended a hand, his words firm and insistent. You gotta be in kidding me. Those carbon nanotubes were at least 300 times stronger than steel and that dude broke them as if they were made of paper. Gasped Quicksilver. Sabretooth nodded dumbly, speechless. A.H. You mean this? Magneto kept his cool in front of everyone as he moved his left hand up. With that gesture, the whole island shook violently and the island parted at the center, a giant laser machine rose up and towered menacingly over everyone. Surprised. This machine, he spoke of it with pride as if it was his own child, is fitted with atomic disintegrator. One simple wave of my hand and every single pathetic human on this whole planet will be nothing but dust. Eric tilted his chin confidently, smirking evilly. No, you can't. Do you even realize how many lives will be lost? Jean cried out. That is irrelevant, my child. Humans treat mutants like animals. They don't deserve to live. Magneto snapped, just the slightest bit of pain behind his cold words. Hey, that's not the machine you stole. It was small and spherical. Stop lying, and give me that. Thingy. Goku protested, making everyone, even Magneto, sweat drop. Are you brainless? He said it's fitted with the atomic disintegrator. That's the same thing they have stolen, yelled Wolverine in frustration. Just how dumb could this guy be? Oh, I get it, said Goku, with a voice that clearly meant he didn't get it, as he turned this face towards them. Everyone was surprised to see the look on Goku's face. He had a smile. A smile. Not of innocence but of confidence and hope. Telling them, it's all right. Have faith in me. Enough already. I'm taking him out, Sabretooth roared as he lashed out on Saiyan to rip him apart. Before anyone could anticipate anything, Goku grabbed Sabretooth's arm and hurled him away, his fading cries could be heard as he disappeared into the horizon. Goku laughed sheepishly, 
scratching the back of his head with his hand. He was sure not to add too much force, maybe that guy was weaker than he thought. Oh, Goku's sweat dropped when he realized what he had done. Everyone's jaw dropped to the ground as Sabretooth was sent flying miles away, before he was out of sight. Whoa! That must be at least hundreds of kilometers, commented Quicksilver, looking while whistling at the direction Sabretooth was thrown. What are you doing standing here? Go get him, Magneto yelled in disbelief and rage. Quicksilver sighed in dismay, hearing the harsh order. His dad was always like this. Why won't he settle down with his family like a normal human? Maybe that's because he wasn't a human to begin with. Pushing those thoughts aside, Quicksilver turned his attention towards the Saiyan. In a split second, Quicksilver materialized in front of him and released a barricade of punches at nearly lightning speed. Barely making any effort, Goku easily dodged all the punches before delivering a very fast, yet very light punch in his opponent's gut. Pietro was sent skidding a few feet back, and he dug his heels deeply into the ground to increase friction. Fortunately he was able to recover in time to avoid crashing headfirst into a tree. His eyes widened how could that guy be that fast? He hadn't even known that Goku had thrown a punch until he found himself flying. It's impossible, he was supposed to the fastest mutant alive, there's no way that guy can outspeed him. He gritted his teeth in anger, before a light bulb glowed in his head and he smirked, turning to face the Saiyan. Well, it seems you are more than just brute strength after all. Quicksilver's entire body started vibrating violently. In just a few seconds, his body had split up into a dozen Quicksilvers, and they stood in the same pose, staring intimidatingly at Goku. Goku's eyes widened wow, he knows the multiform technique? Cool? The silver-haired warrior's ego increased dramatically, mistaking his opponent's expression for one of fear and shock. Faster than anyone else present could see, Goku and the clones started exchanging hundreds, if not thousands, of blows. The movement of the warriors engaged in battle were so fast that you could only hear sounds of bone colliding with flesh and grunts of pain, if not a quick flash of color, and that was if they were lucky. After every passing second, the number of clones started reducing until only the real Quicksilver was left. Quicksilver was breathing heavily, bruises all over his body while on the other hand, Goku seemed just fine in fact, he wasn't even winded as if he hadn't been fighting at all. Don't get why, I still see, Quicksilver's eyes nearly popped out their sockets as Goku connected a strong punch in his gut. That's enough. You did your best. Now rest. Goku ordered in a calm voice, releasing his grip. Quicksilver stared at Goku blankly, head spinning, before his vision slowly blacked and his unconscious body slumped to the ground. All right. So who's next? Goku bounced in enthusiasm turning his attention towards the only two members left standing, Magneto and Mystic. Much to Goku's surprise, Mystic stepped forward to face him. I'm sorry, but I don't fight women. Goku answered sincerely. To him, women were weak it was not a case of gender bias of some sort, but Goku had never really seen a female warrior other than his wife in 18, and even then they were a far cry to even his suppressed form. It was a precaution he usually took. A smile formed on Mystic's face when those words reached her ears. To hear her opponent say that, was music to her ears. She especially loved the look of shock and disbelief that would form on their face when they realized they had no hope of winning. Don't worry about her, Goku. A small voice chirped, and Goku almost fell back in shock when a very small Janet appeared. Janet? Is that you? Wow, you are the size of a wasp? Goku gasped in amazement as he examined her. I can change my size at will. They don't call me wasp for nothing, you know, Janet winked. Anyways, leave that woman to me. I will handle her. You deal with Magneto. The now tiny Janet ginned confidently as she reverted back to her original size. Giving her a nod, the spiky haired Saiyan flew towards the leader of Brotherhood while other members watched him closely. Scott, why aren't you using your laser eyes to free us? Jean asked anxiously, wanting to get into the fight. As if I hadn't tried. This metal, or whatever it is, seems invulnerable to heat. Scott continued to focus his laser vision on his metal binds, but nothing happened. Say, Jean, why don't you use your powers to help them? Janet can handle Mystic. I'm not sure about Goku, but I can't help him in any way here. Magneto's helmet is protecting him from my powers. Jean informed Logan, frowning. 
Silence fell among the members of X-Men. None knew what to do in this situation. Oi, loser. Wanna bet who will win? Wolverine smirked, turning his gaze towards Scott. Huh? If I win, your car is mine for a whole month. So that bub or the old man? Wolverine raised an eyebrow, daring Scott to refuse. Ah, if I win, your bike is mine. I'm with Magneto, replied Scott. He was kind of guilty to side with the enemy, but he wasn't entire sure of Goku's abilities, as strong as he may. Men, Jean and Storm signed in unison, exchanging a knowing look. At the battlefield, so now it's just you and me. Either you surrender here or I have to stop you. Goku narrowed his eyes, touching down in front of Magneto. Seeing how you defeated Sathertooth and my son, I'll rather not fight you. Magneto answered, much to Goku's disappointment, but that doesn't mean I'm admitting defeat. What? Like I told you before, this machine is under my control, one wave and whole humanity will be history. Even if you defeat me, you still wouldn't be able to save everyone. But I'm not that cruel. Join me and I can promise no harm will be done to those pathetic insects. Magneto hissed with wise smile on his face. Time is running out, my friend. Should I use this machine? No. Dot you can't, Goku gritted his teeth in frustration and anger. Magneto was right. Even if he was able to defeat him, Magneto only had to move once and humanity is doomed. What should he do? Well, we will love to see you to do it, came a new voice. Goku turned his head around towards the source of the voice. It belonged to man in red mechanical suit. Although all parts of his body was covered in the red suit, Goku was sure it was a normal human as he could clearly sense his energy. You, what are you doing here? Magneto snapped in anger, clearly unhappy about this interruption. Ah, is it way to call the most popular and handsome Avengers, the one and only, Iron Man, boosted the man in machine. As why as ever, aren't you, Tony? But you must have clearly heard what I said. I'm just one move away to destroy all humans. Now let that guy choose. Magneto turned his attention towards Saiyan. You don't have to listen to him, you know. He's all bark and no bite, assured Tony as he walked over to Goku. Goku was confused as to the man's identity, but he claimed to be a member of Avengers, whatever that was, and it sounded good and heroic. Besides, he was extremely calm in such a situation. What? Didn't you hear me? Magneto yelled out. Yeah, yeah, go on try all you want but I won't count on that. Iron Man shot back confidently. That's it. Because of your stupidity, the whole of humanity would suffer. Magneto roared, waving his hand forward. Nothing happened no flash, no cries of terror. The machine didn't work at all. Ah, yes. I forgot to tell you that I've already hacked that machine while you were busy bitching about destroying humans and shit. This machine is a piece of junk now. You should dump it in the trash heap, and bury yourself while you're at it. Iron Man mocked. Goku's eyes widened whoa. That guy could easily disable such a large and complex machine in a few minutes. He must be a genius. Just like Bulma. You. Dot you stupid. Just when I was. So close to my goal, I. I'll kill you. Magneto charged towards Iron Man but stopped as the latter shot a dozen of mini missiles at him. Before the missiles could hit him, Magneto engulfed himself with a transparent shield. As the smoke cleared, Magneto was standing with no sign of any injury. Did you believe you can defeat with these toys? asked Magneto, rolling his eyes. No but he can, replied Iron Man looked upwards, and Goku followed his gaze. Goku and Magneto watched in awe as a huge green man, wearing nothing but a huge pair of purple trousers, rocketed from above towards Magneto who immediately surrounded himself with his shield. Hulk smash. The man roared as his fists came into contact with the shield. The shield shattered and Magneto was blown back by the immense force of the blow, and he dug a crater in the ground. He felt his bones break and his muscles tear as he landed. A 500 meter wide crater was formed around him and the small island shook. Don't think. Why you have. Dot one. Magneto muttered weakly as he coughed a mixture of blood and saliva. His head spun but the evil leader forced himself on his legs and swayed a bit. Just as he regained his balance, a heavy war hammer hit him on the face, sending him flying. The blow was enough to knock the lights out of Magneto and he fell to the ground, unconscious. Thou should know when to give up, Magneto. 
A blonde man with long hair appeared. He was wearing what appeared to be a Viking cap and a moor, with a billowing red cape behind him. As the man waved his hand, the large heavy hammer flew back into his grasp. Hulk! Thor! Iron Man! Janet exclaimed happily bouncing over towards them as she left behind a tied up, unconscious mystic. How did you guys find us? She chirped in curiosity. Your Avengers ID card! replied Tony winking, we didn't know you were doing this mission for S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, it was a request from Nick Fury, Janet explained. A question, by any means, does this guy have something to do with thee? Thor asked, revealing an unconscious Sabretooth. We found him flying near the beach of USA, Tony raised an eyebrow, prodding him with the metal toe of his boot. Ah ha ha. Sorry, I used too much strength to throw him. Goku laughed sheepishly while scratching the back of his head. The Avengers stared at him quizzically, the same question on their minds. Wait, what? Guys, this is Goku. He has recently joined S.H.I.E.L.D. and apparently he had accidentally teleported here from another universe. Janet caught the attention of the Avengers, and introduced one another. Impressive, warrior. Thou art as quite strong and judging by the look on the face, it seems thou have many tough battles in past, complimented Thor. Thanks. You guys are strong too. I can sense it. Especially you too. Goku motioned towards Hulk and Thor. We should spar sometime. That's a deal, son Goku. Thor smiled. Hulk loves to fight. The spiky man seems strong to Hulk. Hulk will fight him. But no one is stronger than Hulk. The large green man declared, thumping his chest. Putting that aside, do you guys know that S.H.I.E.L.D. was keeping an eye on your mission through satellites? It seems that they are quite interested in our new friend, informed Iron Man, turning his attention towards Goku. Well, then let's ask him directly, Janet said, before everyone nodded. Um, guys, can you help us? We still here. Jean's voice echoed over, quite displeased, who was still bound along with the other members. Ah, we almost forgot about them, both Janet and Goku sweat dropped nervously. A few minutes later, all of them were freed, thanks to Hulk and Thor. Everyone was standing near the jet as the X-Men were about to leave, the mission completed. But they, alas, were quite depressed that they did nothing to help out except F equals to serve as a temporary distraction. Well, we'll have to take our leave now. You should drop by the academy sometimes, Goku. It's fun while having you around, Jean smiled. Sure, I will, Goku said with his famous son grin. And I'll make sure to accompany him. Janet cast a suggestive, proud glance over to Jean, as she wrapped around Goku's arm. I will looking forward to it. Jean bared her teeth in what could be considered as a forced smile as she glared daggers at Janet who seemed to return it with sparks. Women are really scary sometimes, Tony remarked, as he and Thor sweat dropped. Indeed. Oi, bub. Jean is mine. Stay away from her, understand. Logan snapped threateningly, noticing the very obvious feud his girl had with Janet over this new guy, to which Goku nodded, not understanding what he meant. Jean, Logan. Hurry up. We're leaving. Scott's voice echoed from inside the jet. Janet waved as the X-Men group left the island. So shall we go and meet Fury? Asked Iron Man. No need for that. He is already here, replied Goku, sensing his energy. You can come out now. I know you are here. A moment later, the shield helicarrier came out of its stealth mode and descended on the ground. Hundreds of soldiers rushed out the carrier before picking up the unconscious Magneto and others, carrying them back. Goku and others were surrounded by the soldiers pointing their guns at them. The situation seemed familiar to Goku, but this time Fury wasn't happy at all. We need to talk. At the present time, how dare you interfere in their mission? You weren't supposed to there. Fury yelled in, well, Fury. No need to yell at me, Fury. Not especially what you were trying to do, I don't think you should talk. Tony narrowed his eyes seriously. What are you saying? You know damn well what you have done. You were spying on them, and when you see that he is stronger than what you could possibly imagine, you would start to develop weapons that would be able to deal with him. Don't try to lie, I already have all that information stored in data files at Stark Industries. Tony frowned, revealing everything. Janet gasped. She was boiling with anger from inside. Even after all this, S.H.I.E.L.D. was developing weapons to eliminate Goku? 
What? How you dare to do that? He helped you selflessly and this is how repay him, Janet slammed her fists and stood up, glaring heatedly at Fury. Wasp, you don't understand. This guy is dangerous. Who knows why he is here and he can do, Nick hissed. Oh ho, I know damn well, I know you and all your goddamn lies. Goku, we're leaving. Now, Janet snarled as she grabbed Goku's arm and dragged him outside the room. Wow. There goes your last hope of ever get help from Avengers. You really need learn how to talk to a woman. Tony quipped as he stood up and walked towards the exit. Oh and by the way, I've deleted all the intel on Goku from S.H.I.E.L.D. records. A smug Iron Man added as an afterthought, seeing the enraged look on Fury's face, as he left the room. Damn you, Tony. Damn you and the Avengers, Fury growled. Outside. So? inquired Thor when he saw Goku and others heading back outside. We're leaving. I don't want to stay here even for a second, Janet declared. And me? asked Goku, unsure of what he would be doing. Of course, you are coming with us, Janet said, as if it was the most obvious thing in the universe. Yeah. We need more members like you in our team, added Tony, also maybe Hulk and Thor find a new partner to spar with. So what you say Goku? Want to come to Avengers Mansion and work as an official Avenger? Offered Tony. Sure why not? Goku smiled excited, ready for his new adventure. Welcome to the team, son Goku. Shield Prison. Magneto was sitting in a special cell made for just for him. A cell where there was no metal. No matter how strong his powers were, they were of no use to him there. Suddenly, a portal opened in front of him. Showing no sign of surprise, Magneto narrowed his eyes as he walked into the portal. As quickly as it appeared, it vanished behind him. He was met with sight of similar to that of hell. Demons everywhere, lava flowing down the alley and a huge castle at the end. Without any hesitation, Magneto walked towards the castle. Ignoring all the stairs from demons inside the castle walls, he continued until he reached the throne room. Magneto, acknowledged a huge shadowed figure sitting on the throne, his voice raspy. Do you have any information on him? Yes, my lord. Magneto kneeled, he is a Saiyan named Goku, he's currently with Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. A Saiyan, you say? I haven't heard that name in thousand years. Interesting. The figure hissed with delight, eyes widening with recognition. So did you fight this, Goku? No, unfortunately due to Avengers, I couldn't fight. Magneto answered, but even without them, he would have defeated me in one shot, if he were serious. I see. You did your role well. When the time comes, you'll get what you desire. The figure nodded, satisfied. As for Avengers, I have someone that can deal with them. Another portal opened as a man walked out of it. Asgardian? Magneto growled, venom dripping from his voice. Don't add me in the same pathetic category of my useless brother, will you? Sad man chuckled, a sinister smile on his face. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.